Hey, algebra students, let's look at a super handy application of the formula sheet. It says use the quadratic formula to solve for x in the equation 2x squared plus 3x minus 20 equals 0. Now you might say to me, Kate, I don't need a formula to solve here. I know how to solve for x. But of the skills that we've learned so far of isolating variables, you would not be able to get x alone on his side of the equal sign in this particular equation. Why not? It's because we have both an x squared and an x. It takes some more complex methods to learn how to get x alone when you have something like that going on. Now, a way that you're going to learn in college is called factoring. And factoring is wonderful because it is the fast method to do something like this. However, factoring takes a lot of time to learn. So it takes a lot of time to learn, but then once you learn it, it's super fast. I only have so much time to give you guys. And so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at just solving this sucker with the quadratic formula, busting out the formula. And then I promise we can learn factoring when we get to college and you'll love it. <laughs> but for now, we're going to practice this with the quadratic formula. One thing you should know is if this was on the GED, it would not say use the quadratic formula. It would just say solve for X. So how would I know that I could use the quadratic formula? The way that you know is if you have that X squared term. If your X squared term is your highest, I forget what it's called, you guys. Oh, all my college professors would be mad at me right now. You ever have one of those days where there's just not enough coffee in the world? It's your highest degree. Oh my gosh. All that to be said, you know why I don't know that word? Because it's not a vocab word for the GED and I don't teach college classes anymore. Uh, but all I mean, all I'm saying, you don't have to know the word degree, but you do have to know what I mean by that. And that's the highest power that's on a variable. So you see the only power I have is two, the second power. So that's the highest one here, which makes this a quadratic equation. And quadratic equations can be solved using the quadratic formula. All right, enough talking about it. Let's go get that formula. So if you're on your GED formula sheet, quadratics down at the bottom in the algebra section, towards the middle of that, we see the quadratic formula. And there it is. It's pretty hideous, but don't be scared of it. We're going to do some of the nasty work in our calculator. X is equal to negative B plus or minus. That's what that says. It's not some new math to do, guys. It's a lazy way of writing that there's two answers. There's an answer where you add and an answer where you subtract. So negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. When you go to college and you have to memorize that, there's a song I really shouldn't sing because anybody who hears me sing will be sad and have a sad day. <laughs> I can't sing. I can do algebra. Um, but it's to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. But it's on the formula sheet for the GED. So you don't have to have memorized that X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. <laughs> I told you I wasn't going to sing and I just ruined your day. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Obviously, if you have A, B, and C in this formula, you need to know what A, B, and C stand for. So A, B, and C are the number portions when you have this equation written in standard form. Don't panic. I'm about to tell you what I mean. I mean that if you have this whole thing set equal to zero check. Ours is set equal to zero. A, B, and C are the numbers with the X squared, the X, and by themselves. So A is over there with X squared. So our number with X squared is two. So our A is two. B is the number with X. Now we can see our B is with X, but careful, you have to consider the sign in front of it. If it's a plus, then it's just a positive three. But if it was a minus, it would be a negative three. Ours is a plus three X, so our B is three. And notice I just write the three. I don't write the X, okay? The B is just the number. And then C, C is what we call the constant. It's the number all by itself. And once again, consider the sign. C is not 20. I just saw a student do that. Error in my Facebook group, they dropped every negative sign. They just totally ignored them. Not you though. So that C is not 20, that C is negative 20. Beautiful. Now you have your A, B, and C to plug into the formula. So X is equal to, 
the opposite or negative of b, and b is 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared. I'm going to use parentheses around b before plugging it in. It's a good habit. Even though it won't make a difference in this problem, it does make a difference in many problems. So if you're not in that good habit, you could get shot in the foot in some of the more challenging examples. So b squared minus 4, and this a and the c are shoved up against the 4, so they're multiplying. And we said a was 2, and c is negative 20. And that's all over, all over. Stretch that fraction bar all the way across. That whole group is being divided by 2 times a, and our a was 2. All right, once again, this looks really pretty gross but it's not that bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the pieces around the plus minus sign and put them in my calculator just to make life easier with you. So first I'll deal with the thing in front of my plus minus sign. There's nothing to do there. Negative three is just negative three. And then I'm going to keep my plus minus sign. Now I can deal with the bottom. That's a separate grouping. Two times two is four. Now, how about on the right-hand side of my plus minus? It is ugly as can be. However, all of those buttons are in the calculator. It's numbers and operations we have. The calculator doesn't have a plus minus. That's why I'm doing it this way. That's why I'm doing all the pieces around the plus minus, okay? So I am going to type that entire expression into my calculator. So we will do the square root key by hitting second square root open up parentheses, three, close parentheses, square, minus four, open up parentheses, two, close parentheses, open up parentheses, negative 20, close parentheses. And we get that this entire ugly piece became just 13. And now here's why I said that I wanted to do all the pieces around the plus minus. Your calc doesn't do a plus minus, so you need to know what that thing means. And once again, that thing meant that I was too lazy to write about the fact that there were two answers. There's an answer when you add and an answer when you subtract. But now's the time where I can't be lazy anymore. How come? Well, because it's time to add and subtract. I can't do both at the same time. So there's a answer that I will get if I add. If I take negative three and I add the 13 and divide by four, but there's also an answer I'm going to get if I subtract and they're both right answers. So there's an answer if I do the negative three minus the 13 and then divide by four. And now that you've broken it up, your calculator does add and it does subtract. So you can hit your calculator back up again, hit the fraction bar, negative three plus 13, arrow down to type four enter and you see five halves and that's a totally legit answer that I'm totally fine with. Don't freak out. And then to simplify the other fraction bar, negative three minus 13 this time over four gives me negative four. So what's the solution? There's two solutions, five halves and negative four. Most common way to write that is to put a comma between them they don't have to write it that way. They could say and, but that's usually how we write it. And expect this, when you use that quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations, expect two answers. Quadratic equations most commonly have two answers. All right, guys, you did great work. This is the most challenging formula on the formula sheet. In fact, when I was a classroom teacher, maybe one out of every 10 classes that I taught, I actually ever got to the quadratic formula with them, just because they could be at a passing level far before we get to something this complex, and students get intimidated by it. But, you know, it's not that bad. We're just flexing the same old muscles we always did. Substitution, simplification. You've got this.